Colton Herta is looking to make it onto the big stage, and that may be a harder challenge than originally anticipated. After certain events have transpired, it seems like Herta's entrance into F1 will be cancelled due to huge protests threatening the sport. On top of that, Herta has been scheduled to hop in an Alpine test in Hungary prior to the Singapore GP, but that thing has been called off, and it may very well indicate that Herta's hopes in F1 may be over before they even started. So what's the big issue with Herta? Why can't he drive an F1? And why do certain F1 teams have so much of a problem when it comes to his entrance to the sport? All of these questions will be answered in this video, so stick around with us for more. Colton Herta has been involved in the summer break saga for a couple of weeks now, and it's been truly a roller coaster ride when it comes to his potential entrance to the sport. For starters, Herta has been related to the Alfa Tori seat, with the Italian team willing to let Gasly go fulfill the vacant Alpine seat that Alonso left behind him. This is one of the reasons why Alpine was ready to give Herta a taste of an F1 car, because they are more than willing to sign Gasly to the extent that they were ready to offer him a ride in their car, just to get a feel of how F1 tastes like. It's not like Herta hasn't done F1 before either. He was part of McLaren's academy, and if he were to sign with any other team, such as AlphaTauri or even Alpine, if that is possible, then he would have been dismissed from the academy. Not that it would hurt him per se, but it's evident that McLaren F1 doesn't have any plans regarding changing its current driver's lineup, as the Norris and Piastri duo should work wonders from 2023 if everything's alright with the car. Nevertheless, Herta's entrance into the F1 sport would be a huge boost to its popularity of it. Now that the USA has increased its interest so much, mostly due to Drive to Survive, which is the documentary on Netflix regarding the F1 world, a USA-based driver would be a real deal in F1. Think about it, the team that is willing to sign Herta will have a very huge increase in revenue from the USA and the fact that there are two new tracks added to the calendar, one in 2022 and one in 2023, is only added to the narrative that the USA finally need a capable driver in F1. Apart from him, Logan Sargent, who is currently driving in F2, is the other USA driver that is related to the F1 seat. Sargent is connected to Williams as he drives under their academy in F2, but is more than happy to step up and take the spot that Latifi is currently holding in the team, quite undeservingly if we may add. However, the competition there has increased since De Vries did an amazing debut in F1, scoring two points in his first race with Williams after having one hour to meet the car that he's going to drive throughout the weekend. Back to Herta we go. What's the issue with him and why can't he join F1? Well, the first major setback is that he doesn't have a super license. That's the deal breaker here and of course that having a super license is the supreme ultimatum when it comes to entering the sport. A driver can obtain one but it needs to have 40 points on it and Herta currently has 32. There are some rules that have been implemented during the COVID era and Herta was truly hoping to bank in on this rule to be granted with a super license. What's the rule more precisely? And that is that the drivers can count their best three scores from the four seasons preceding their applications, which would mean 2019 to 2022 if Herta is to race in F1 next year. In 2019, Herta earned 4 points for finishing 7th in 2020 and earned 20 points by finishing 3rd place and for finishing 5th place in 2021, he earned 8 points. Therefore, he has a total of 32 points. With 2 rounds to go in the 2022 season, he currently lies 10th, with 8 being his best realistic result. Therefore, it won't count as one of his best 3. Herta can gain one extra point for every FV1 session he does between now and the end of the 2022 season, as long as he manages more than 100 kilometers and doesn't log any penalty points. Up to 10 points can be gained if Herta manages to do this, but there is one huge problem, and that is the fact that Herta may not even have enough races and enough free practice sessions with AlphaTauri in order to achieve this. The IndyCar season ends on the same weekend when we are headed to Monza, and it would mean that Herta will have only 6 races remaining to try out with AlphaTauri, therefore he'll still miss 2 points on his super license, and he'll have 38 out of the 40 required. On top of that, it's highly unlikely that the team will be able to arrange a full program in time. On top of that, the FIA can call upon a force majeure, and that could be especially useful because, in this case, the FIA would potentially open up the full 
all-season range of results, try and count the points that Herta would earn from his P2 finish in the 2018 Indy Lights. However, this championship is not qualified as a point scorer in the Super License due to it not having enough competition events, just eight. But since that is outside of Herta's hands, the FIA could very well decide that this competition, more precisely the second place in this competition, would bring Herta 12 points in the championship as it is done with the IndyCar 500. What is the issue then? Well, you've seen De Vries' debut and you've seen that there are so many drivers that already have super license but are forced to sit on the sidelines and are forced to wait for a spot in F1 just to prove themselves. Now, if the FIA goes around these drivers, circumvents its own rules or tries to implement something on the force just because of the sake of popularity, of course, these reserve drivers and F1 teams will be mad. We all know how F1 talents are made, more precisely how they are being bred for the main championship, and that is throughout F3 and F2 championships. Close sources to F1 that there will be protests and of course that F3 and F2 would lose much of its significance. That F1 teams would even stop investing in them. Nick De Vries, one of the drivers that are looking to make an entrance in the sport for quite some time now, has spoken about this matter saying, I trust in the governing body. I think rules are there to be respected. There are plenty of other drivers in the market that have super license points. The necessity is not necessarily that high to go and give someone dispensation to get a super license. Plus, in my own opinion, it would give an incorrect precedent and example to the Formula 2 and Formula 3 championships, said Nick. He also spoke about the investments that are made in F3 and F2, as we all know that there are drivers that are backed up by senior F1 teams on these battlefields, and every team is trying to groom the perfect talent and find the perfect driver for the future. According to Nick, American drivers will be much more motivated to join F3 and F2 if Herta was allowed to race there. The knock-on effect would be much greater than just giving dispensation. First, because there would be many more knocking on the door for a certain request. Secondly, you could argue that people going from Formula 4 to Formula 3 could decide to escape to the US, because in Indy Lights, you only have 12 cars on the grid and it's much easier to score points. And then you could come back. Then you almost kill and jeopardize the ladder we been building over the years, which now is so nice. I compare our platform to what we see in Moto GP3 and 2. There is a clear ladder, a clear path to Formula 1, so it would be a shame if we jeopardize our system and I also think it's unnecessary, finished Nick. With that being said, it's more than evident that F1 teams will be mad if Herta is granted the super license the way everybody expects it to, by not having enough points and just for the sake of the popularity that he'll bring to the sport. This is why the FIA is looking away from this case and is looking away from additional drama after all the controversies with the 2022 rules and all the involvements with the porpoising issues this is the last thing that the F1 sport needs as of now. What do you think of this matter? Let us know in the comments below.